Welcome to the Secret Sauce Podcast. This is a show about relationships with staff, with students, with yourself, with building culture in your classroom, your school, your district, and becoming personally developed so that you can be professionally developed. Be sure and follow our podcast so you don't miss a show. And we're booking now for the 23-24 school year um, for any type of PD that you need, keynotes, seminars, workshops, just get in touch with me. I would love to come to your to your school, your district, and share the secret sauce with you. So let's jump right into the next episode. Here we go. Hey, welcome to episode number 35 of The Secret Sauce with Kip Schubert. I've got a, a good friend of mine here. Not only is he just an educator, but he's a good friend, and we have a really deep connection um, with our lives and stories. And His name is Jeff Kubiak. He is a 25-year educator. He is a vice principal at Union House Elementary in Elk Grove, California, which is kind of the south sa- south of Sacramento, I believe. And he's written a book called Monsters Have Manners that we'll talk about. And and Jeff, I just want to introduce you and, and tell our listeners a little bit about Jeff Kubiak, your story as an educator, um, how you got to where you are and, and who you are. Sure. Hey, great to see you, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, you bet. Join you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Jeff and uh, just finished up my 25th year in education. Um, you know, kind of my, my story goes back because I always thought there's no way I would teach or join education. My mom taught for 35 years in high school. I never thought I would. But I, you know, I taught grades four, five, and six. I was a dean. I was a vice principal, principal for six years, and then uh, stepped back into a vice principal role. I'm a father of two amazing kids. My uh, wife, Piper, is the glue to our life. Um, and yeah, so I'm a former athlete, former coach, and um, you know, try to try to do things in the summer to uh, to recalibrate our bodies and our brains after uh, we, we put it all out there for kids and staff during the year. So yeah, um, yeah. If I remember right, it's swimming, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, share a little bit about, because I know you've got some, like, a, a, an Olympic kind of story. Uh, share a little share that with our listeners, man. Yeah, you know, so growing up, um, I swam, played water polo, played soccer, baseball, did all the things, and then um, just matriculated towards swimming and, and was blessed to do really well. Um I uh, won a gold medal at the Pan Am Games way back in 87. And then uh, 1988, um, coming into Olympic trials, you know, uh, the United States only takes top two for swimming um, after kind of uh, 1976, 1980. They changed it. And um, my, my time coming into the trials was, was first top seed but uh, had kind of a rough outing in the morning the seat at seventh and uh, in the 200 meter breaststroke and at night put it all on the table at least what I thought it was but it was short 12 one hundredths of a second and missed a team and um, you know that kind of uh, was part of my my, my spiral towards my uh, obsessive drinking and and depression and and questioning who I was and which you know, of course led to the road to recovery but yeah so swimming was a big part of my world and it actually still is but I I went on to coach for a long time as well and um, you know I just uh, always always look at athletes with such high regard because of what it takes to put in day in day out you know right it's amazing yeah that's and again, it's, you know, like I always talk about and, and struggle to strength, you know, it's kind of where it started for you. And I know that we've connected, um, in a, in a deep way because of both being in recovery, um, from alcoholism and, um, experiencing the battle with that addiction. And just, if you would, with our listeners, just share, um, what you can or what you, what you feel comfortable with, but. I encourage you to be as raw and vulnerable as you want to, but just share with our listeners, you know, you, that story of of your spiral downward into that that excessive drinking, and and a little bit about 
where you were and how you recovered and how that's impacted you today as an educator? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's crazy, you know, coming from a, both, both sides of my you know, family genetics and hereditary long line of alcoholics, right, on both mom and dad's side. And, you know, growing up and, you know, a little bit of partying here and there in high school and then college, it just like, you know, took off and um, it didn't have to be day to day. But when I would partake, I went big and went all out until there was either nothing gone or I black out or something. And, you know, you, you just start to roll and it becomes part of who you are and um, you know uh, reflecting back looking at the negative impact it had on my first marriage and what what my big kicker was was the the amount of the agitation that I would store and I would just have this excessive agitation and irritation and anger and these outbursts um, uh, and it would just be all consuming um, and then you know it starts ref you know affect affecting your friendships and your relationships and and then your day-to-day -day living and you know I know my time in the water was uh, diminished by what I was doing at night putting in my body right and um, so as you start moving through life and seeing what you are doing and if you're actually taking off your little mask and being really honest which is so hard for us alcoholics right yes it is to to accept the freaking truth then you start to see the crumbles behind you and and the path of your tornado that you've left behind and so, you know, college, you hold on, and then early marriage, you know, hold on. But, like, God, you know, just looking back at, like, my agitation, yelling at my swimmers and getting frustrated that they're not doing their best and, you know, coming home and yelling and, and doing all this and, and outbursts at, at, at students and staff and just, you know, this, this embedded, like, because you're just, you're hating who you are, and so you just right. drink drink to coat it and and it just it's perpetual and ongoing and you know it wasn't until i was you know in my 50s that my amazing wife just like jeff you know shit or get off the pot and this isn't working because there was you know some horrific epi uh, episodes you know like christmas eve you know drink until almost passing out and and breaking stuff and yelling and falling down and going out for a drive, not even remember who I was or what happened. And, um, you know, the, the emotional and verbal abuse that you put towards your children and your wife and freaking animals and yourself. And, um, to this day, you know, I, I try so hard to forgive myself and be self-compassionate, but it's, it's the most difficult thing. You know, I still am not that fond of myself and I still kind of ask a lot of what ifs and wish I was better and, and things I could do differently. And, you know, gosh, dang it. Uh, you know, I, I look at where I've come from and yeah, okay, that's good. I have some things to be proud of, but without people like, you know, Piper in my life and my, my family, you know, I, I wouldn't be here. Um, I totally, yeah. I, I totally get that. Yeah. And dude, this, you know, I've, I'm almost to the 10 year mark, you know, and I still struggle with people, you know, saying, Hey, Kip, you've, you've come so far. You're doing such a great job. I, I mean, I struggle hearing that, you know? You know, on the book, I just, you know, it just got released. And I know that you, maybe you felt this way with yours too. It's just, I've had a lot of success with it. And when people compliment me on it and things like that, I still have a, a hard time with that because I still carry some, I mean, like you said, that, that wake of destruction that we leave and that tornado that we were, I still carry so much guilt and shame, especially with my kids. 
um, with that. And, you know, why I do what I do is to try to make up for that and make some sense of, of it and make it matter. And it's, I think it's one of the hardest things for guys uh, or people like, like you and I to do is to forgive ourselves and to be able to see ourselves in a different way. But, in a, and I know it's a, a day at a time process, but, and I, and I think that you, you, you hit on a good point for people to, to hear that it's not just addicts or alcoholics, but everybody goes through trauma, right? Everybody deals with their own Mount Everest. Ours was alcohol. And, and I think that it's really hard for people to, once they come through it on the other side, it's easy to, to be able to give back for me. I don't know how it is for you, but it's easy for me to, to get back and make a difference and, and do those kind of things. But it's really hard when you sit back and reflect and you look back at that past. I think people have a really hard time letting go and releasing that. Um, yeah, you know, there's no that, doubt. That no doubt. Shame. Yeah, uh, and I think, I think one, sorry to interrupt, one, one of the things ahead. that I struggle with most, my friend, is that, you know, I was like an ass and a jerk for so long and to so many people. And I burned so many bridges and relationships. And then, you know, when I wrote my first book, One Drop of Kindness, you know, I, I kind of had to like really wake up because people are like, how can this guy write a book about kindness? Right. And he's not even kind, right? And right. so I'm like, yeah, I get it. And, uh, but, you know, we all want to believe in reform. We all want to believe in second chances. And I, you know, was trying to not only use that book as a vehicle to improve myself, but hopefully to help others be more kind and find things out. And, you know, I, <laughs> it's incredible like the relationships that you lose through alcoholism and the ones that really matter and stay around. But like, damn, you know, it's, it, the, 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 the questioning who you are and the comparative of always looking at other things and like, just, it's just a joy killer. And, you know, I see, you know, people doing this and people doing that. It's like, oh, God, you know, my book's not a number one seller. I'm a crappy author. Or, you know, oh, I didn't get chosen to speak at that conference. I, I suck. And, and you know, I used to be a super overly self-confident person, even to the point of, like, arrogant and cocky. And now I'm just like, I, I got to be comfortable with me. I have a great family. I have a lot of great things. But finding that gratitude every day is so damn hard and to be like real and honest with yourself and, and accept it. Whew. It's a freaking battle. Yeah, it is. And I, I do think though, you know, the things that we've been through with, with addiction and in our work and recovery, I do think that opens, opens us up to, I mean, cause we have to drop the mask, you know, we, we have to, or we're never going to get out of the, those cycles. And I, I really think it opens this up to, and although it's difficult and it's a battle, like you said, and it's super painful, um, it opens us up to really finding who we really are, who Jeff really is, who Kip really is. And, and I think the, that's one of the great things about adversity and struggle, if we're willing to see it, that it allows us to really find out, you know, who we are and it's hard. Because, you, like you said, people don't want to – we want to stay comfortable. We, we want to hide behind those masks. We want people to think all these things about us instead of just being real yeah. and being authentic. And it's you – know, like, you know, like you said, with the, the bestseller stuff with your book and everything else, it's, I have to remind myself every day that remember why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. It's to make a difference. It's not to be a bestseller. It's not to sell this many. It's not to make money. It's not to do any of that. You're sharing your story to make a difference. So someone else can maybe benefit from what you've gone through the mountains that I've climbed. So maybe they can climb theirs a bit easier. And, you know, there's so much purpose in that. And, um, how well, is one of the, go ahead. Let me just add one thing. One of the yeah. cool things I think about your book and the depth of it is that like anyone who's been affected by or related to or seen or any of that with, someone that's been angry or depressed or obsessed or compulsive or 
an alcoholic or an addict can find useful tips and tools and, and can relate. And I think it's so important that, you know, everyone knows someone or knows someone that knows someone that is affected by someone that's gone through addiction or recovery or even, you know, like suicide, depression. Right. And it, it's important for us to be able to kind of sit back and go, hmm, gosh, dang, this, you know, I, I know someone or I know someone that doesn't and use those as, as helpful tools or, or, or ways to also be able to open up and embrace new people and see differences of like, damn, I got to open my compassion and empathy and my, my empathy yeah. doors a little bit wider. Right. Right. And, you know, I just, I know that my recovery is, and it's been a journey and, and it's always, I mean, it's ongoing. You know, so I'm, it seems like I'm always learning and evolving and trying to become better at least. But, and I know what's really impacted me as, as a teacher and a coach and a speaker. Um, how is your, because our, we're all, our recovery stories are similar, but they're unique, right? Mm -hmm. How How is what you've gone through, um, you know, in the, in the recent years in your recovery, how has that impacted you? Um as a vice principal, as a leader in your school, and even as a, as a husband and a dad? You know, it's in the three and a half years, it's been just life altering, not only mentally, physically, socially, you know, all those things, but finding different ways to hear each child and finding ways to actually open up and relate to trauma, relate to conversations and you know, to be able to, to be someone that can hear and listen and reflect instead of being quick to judge and the that super quick explosion, right? You know, I still right. have to work every day on my agitation and my reaction and not response. And um, I try so hard to be the, the guy that's better than he was the day before. And you know, I swear my wife is like the most compassionate and kind person in the history and always gets me to think differently about, you know, hey, Jeff, find joy. Hey, Jeff, do this. Hey, Jeff. And it's just that's the kind of person I need to be better. And so I'm better at my job. I'm better at relationships. I have way less and way different friendships than I used to, but they're more authentic. I'm getting better at being kind to myself. Um, but, you know, I think the biggest thing I struggle with is that comparison to looking out there at all the people doing all these things. It's just like, dude, be good with where you are yeah, and yeah. what you're doing because you don't know what their story or path was. And look right. at, you know, look how far you've come and humility is not an easy you know thing for me to accept yeah i'm right there with you on that and mm -hmm. it seems like the the more i fight humility <laughs> the more i'm humbled totally you know, man you know because totally. i you know i watch you know you know we call him pep but darren peppard is is my <laughs> results coach you know and he is a guy who 24 7 grind he is relentless at what he does and and i want to do the things that he's doing and so i have got to really watch that comparison you know because right now i'm not as re relentless as he is and i may and i don't think i'm in the position to be um you know he has the time to do more of what he does because since he's not full-time and as a superintendent or in education anymore and and um but he reminds me all the time to, you know, he tells me and, re, and, and helps me to celebrate where I am. And at the same time, you know, helps me keep organizing what's coming next and to be happy where I'm at, to accept where I'm at and to know where I want to go. Um, but yeah, I'm like, you have to remember, too, that your bandwidth is what God has given you and we have to accept what we can do. And I think that's. You and I share that similarity of yeah. that 
you know, I, I have a tendency to take on way more than I can. Yep. And then things get diluted and, and you kind of lose your vision, right? And um, it, it's great to have people like Pep around that not only inspire, but kind of show you a constant reminder to be your self. Yeah, you know, it keeps me accountable for sure. And yep. the one thing I, you were talking about um, as you got into college, it was kind of a, a go big or go home mentality with your drinking. My, I was exactly the same way. Didn't do hardly anything in high school, but, and I played, and I played soccer in college too. So I couldn't, you know, during season, it was difficult. You know, I, I, and I wanted to play soccer was my thing. And so, you know, I didn't have time to party, but when soccer was done, you know, it was all in. And, uh, but it's funny how, because even now, even when I was in recovery, my counselor, like the first two days, was like, Kip, slow down. You can't be recovered in one day. And I'm like, I know, but I want to be the best. I want to be the best here. I want to be the best recovery guy there ever was. And, totally. You know, and like everything I do, I want to do, I want to do it all, and I want to do it right then. And so it's, I think it's that. And that is what that – and I don't – I don't know if you were like this or not, but being in the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, I, I went all the time and they one day at a time, one day at a time. And I never could understand the real meaning behind that saying. And I guess like, just, I would be like, shut the, you know, uh-huh. God, it was just one day at a time crap. I want it now. Let's right. go big. And, and, um, after about a year in, I finally got that. I, I sat in a meeting one day. And it just hit me. It's like, worry about today, take care of today, give everything, go big today. Tomorrow we'll get here soon enough. And it's still hard for me. You know, I want to yeah. do it all at once. And But it's so cool, though, the things that we've been through, even though it's difficult, those little lessons that we learn along the way and that we can now, to the to the staff that you serve and to the staff around me and to our kids and our buildings and, you know, and our teams that we work with and support. It's just, you know, we can take those lessons and, you know, think about today, take care of today, take care of the process. Cause we learned the hard way. Right. Yeah. Um, so you've, you've written a book recently and I want you to share with the, the connection with your son too. Cause I think that is so freaking cool. Um, but you've written a book, monsters have manners. Um, that's your, that's your newest one. Uh, share with our listeners about how that came to be, where your inspiration came from, and about that collaboration with your son. Yeah, so it, it totally came to be by my son, Braden, because, um, you know, he's super ADHD, just like me. But, you know, he would, in a way for him to keep busy, he would whip out these illustrations, like epic and sometimes like 10 seconds, 10 minutes, whatever it is, but he would just fly through them. He started making like books of these monster drawings and monsters love math and this and that. And then, um, you know, I had written my first book, One Drop of Kindness, and it's me. And he's like, Dad, you know, maybe could we do a book together? I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. And then I just started seeing these amazing illustrations of these super cool monsters. And, you know, because my first book, Kindness, and I just thought, you know, manners who, 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 you know, who couldn't use more manners in school? And, you know, we do a thing our first month in school all about manners. You know, we do a, you know, please week, a thank you week, um, excuse me, you know, all that kind of thing. Trying to just help students be a little bit better. And so Braden put all these things together and my friend Amanda Fox and then uh, partnered with Teacher Goals and said, hey, let's do this. She's been a huge fan and advocate of mine. And and so we put together this amazing book and it's got QR code. So, you know, a couple of the pages come to life and everything. And it's just a fun way to look at like too easily, even adults, we go through without, Hey, thanks for holding the door open or, Oh, excuse me. Or no, you go ahead first or thank you. Um, and it's just, it's a fun little way. And then, you know, to be able to do something with your kid, you know, my dad and I, had a strange relationship and that we can go into that some other time, but we didn't do a lot of dad son stuff. And, you know, as our kids get older, you know, Braden's 14 now did these drawings when he was like eight, nine, 10. And 
to be able to sit down and just hang out and do things like that is so important. And especially for the kids I serve in, in, in South Sacramento, it's like they don't have dads. And, you know, I, I got to take advantage and be able to connect with them and do things as a man to boy thing, but also embrace my whole son and, and the opportunity that I get. And so it's just been a really cool project and super proud of him. And it's, it, it's just, it's awesome. Where can um, where can our listeners go get this book, Monsters Have Manners? You know, it's on Amazon. It's on Barnes and Noble. Um, hopefully, it's in an independent small bookshop near you too, because I, I love to support those. And JeffKubiak.com is my website, and kind of reiterate reiterating it. Um, so there's there's a lot of free downloadable and resources that I'm working on getting back up and. Um, you know, like you, just we'd love to spread the word about our books and, and help right. people, uh, you know, find a way to be like, hey, that was pretty cool. There, your job is done. One person, one person benefited. And so it's a dang good thing, right? That's all that matters, right? And I yeah. just, you really brought up a, a point that, and we were talking before we, you know, started to record. And I think as alcoholics, one of the things that we are probably, experience the most guilt and shame from is that destruction that we did to our own children. Right. No doubt. And, and so we go to school and just like you said, you become that surrogate, you become that surrogate dad for these kids. Right. And, and we have to find that balance with our own because for me, it's been, it's been a gift of mine, I guess, to connect with kids. Um, mm -hmm. And I do feel guilty about it sometimes because it's like, I, how could you go to school? And even when you were in your worst days, how could you go to school and connect with these kids, but couldn't connect with your own? And, you know, my three older kids are adults now with their own children and you can't get that back. Right. Right. And so what I do now is really to honor them. Um, I wrote the book to honor them. Um, and to kind of make up and give back to others mm -hmm. because I didn't give it to them. And with Cam being, you know, she's 16, so she's close to, to your son's age. And, and um, I know I really, really am more self-aware of being present when I'm with her um, because of the past. And, yeah. and um, you know, that balance, I don't know how you, how you deal with it, you know, with school and, and at home, but it's, could be tricky i think a lot of i think a lot of teachers and a lot of people listening to this probably feel that too whether they were have a past like ours or not because they've become that surrogate parent totally for those kids and then they go home and have their own kids and a lot of times we just don't have the energy you know and you like you said you had to to deal with agitation and anger and outburst and you know you probably you're probably fused your fuse was probably even more short with your kids than it was oh, yeah. the ones at school and beyond you know, how, how have you um you know, how have you dealt with that and or how do you deal with it today? Well, it's kind of like what you're saying. So like my baby girl, she's going to San Diego State in six weeks. <laughs> she just graduated high school and we can't get that time back. And the times that I yelled at her and belittled her and didn't support her, you know, I really try to focus on all the good that she's done because she's done so much. You know, she's faced a lot of adversity in different ways that I won't share now, but like, you know, I got to support her and, and let her know that she's kind and strong and smart and beautiful. And, you know, the same thing, just doing little, little things together, playing a game, um, going for a walk, going to grab ice cream and just being there and listening and supporting her. And, and also sharing that, gosh, dang, I'm so excited for your next chapter. You know, you, she wants yeah. to join a sorority and wants to do this and that. And, that's so cool, you know, and like she's she's becoming her and then, you know, getting that time with Braden, really only four more years because he's going to be a freshman. And, um, you know, I enjoy going to lacrosse with him. He's becoming this super star athlete and he's so smart and creative. And so you you watch your kids and you just like I just got to stop and, and let it happen and, and embrace it because. 18 years ago, I had a 
a kid and now she's in college and i'm like holy yeah it goes crap. by in a, goes by in a blink doesn't it no and so we don't get we don't get the time back no we don't but damn it we got to make that time happen that we do have and yes we it's, do it's such a blessing and 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 look at where all this has brought us kids like you and i didn't know each other a couple of years ago and now we're we're good friends. We share stories. We share paths, and hopefully, yeah. you know, we're going to present at a conference someday together. And that's right. Cry with people, laugh with people, that's and right. just make life better, right? Yeah, so it's right. it's amazing. Yeah, it is, and it's just. I think that, like you, and you talked about relationships early on, and you know, I think that's one one of the gifts that recovery gives us is they're different, and they may not be as many, but we sure know how to be real and authentic with them, and they mean so much more. And I just, I want to touch base again to, for our, our listeners. If you guys are, are interested in, and please check out uh, what Jeff has to offer and his resources and his book is at Jeff Uh, Jeff also is, is a great speaker. Um, bring him into your community. Um, I know his passion is just about not just, not just recovery, but just health and wellness and mental health for, for educators and, and for people. And, uh, he would be a great resource to do that. And again, his book monsters have manners, um, is in all your, your bookstores, Barnes and Noble, uh, Amazon, uh, grab it for your kids. If you're an elementary school teacher, um, grab a few copies, have it in your room. Um, it could be, it's just going to make a difference with, with the kids that you serve. Uh, Jeff, did I miss anything? Just more time, secret sauce. We uh, we got to make this more uh, more often. Because yeah, we, it's, it's, yeah. It's look, too good. <laughs> look for look for uh, for Jeff and Kip getting together for some uh, overall wellness stuff to to bring into to your school community too. Because we're going to bring the secret sauce and and bring some punch and some uh, some good stuff about being kind and and especially to yourself because it's so important. Uh, Jeff, thank you, my friend, uh, for giving me your time. Uh, listeners, again, check out jeffkubiak.com and Monsters Have Manners. It has been my pleasure, buddy, to have you on. I love you, brother, and thank you for the opportunity. Great to All see right. you. All right, I love you too. We'll see you guys next time. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. Explore more podcasts at teachbetter.com slash podcasts, and we'll see you at the next episode. And we appreciate you listening to our podcast. Let's connect and impact lives together. Leave me a comment on this episode or find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube at The Secret Sauce with Kip Schubert. We would be honored if you would share this episode on your social media. Continue to share your story. It matters. Reach back over that mountain. Every educator, every student needs to feel loved, heard, and valued. So dish out that secret sauce and be that Sherpa to guide others to the summit. Till next time, let's stay all in and all together. <laughs>